So I'm stoked to be able to bring you a review of the Sony HT A9 home theater system. I have it wall mounted in a huge room with the larger of the two subs, the SA SW5, both with and without the Sony A90J Master Series OLED as a center channel. And I just happen to have the Sonos Arc system to offer my thoughts on how these two systems compare. So if you want to get the scoop on the HT A9, the subs, the OLEDs as centers, and how it compares to the Sonos Arc and other speakers, stick around. What's up everyone, I'm B the Installer and I get a bit pumped to review new audio solutions that can offer great sound without a ton of installation work. So the Sony HTA9 was something that I had to get a hold of because it has a simplicity of just four wireless speakers and a sub and because it also can connect with my new Sony TV. And because the speakers arrived on a Friday and the sub the following Monday, I was forced to toy around with just the speakers before adding the sub. And of course I have to compare it to the Sonos Arc. So I'll dive into some specs, give you the good and some of the things I do not like about it and then compare in the verdict. All of that right after you smash the like button because that's how we roll on YouTube and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you want more info on TV and home theater products and installations. And fire your questions at me. I'm sure I'll miss something and I'm always happy to respond to as many questions as possible or just let me know if you have this or another system and why. So the HT A9 consists of four speakers and a central hub unit. Remember the sub is not included and it's optional whether you get the smaller 200 watt SASW3 or the larger 300 watt SASW5. The four surround speakers are a light gray color and larger than I thought they'd be. Each of the four has a dome tweeter, a forward facing woofer and an upward firing speaker. There are also two microphones on each speaker to help with the calibration that I'll talk about in a bit. And you can put these speakers on a stand or they can be easily wall mounted with a simple screw into a stud or a universal mount that offers a little angle if needed. Both of the holes are found under the plastic on the back. I was a bit iffy on the color but now I'm getting used to it and it makes sense. If you have only one option, many don't like black and many don't like white and this is a pretty neutral color and it would look good on most walls and stands. The hub unit is a bit bulky and reminded me of my Apple TV but bigger and it has a variety of connections. There's an LAN if you want a hard line to the internet, a USB which is only for updates that you can do wirelessly anyways, and of course this weird S center out plug which looks very similar to the S center in that I've seen on the new Sony TVs in 2021. More on that to come. The system has two HDMIs, one to connect to a device including the ability to pass through HDMI 2.1 and 4K resolution at 120 frames per second for gaming and the other HDMI goes into the TV and is the ARC slash eARC that returns sound and other communications from the TV especially Sony TVs. Turning on and connecting the system was pretty straightforward. Plug in the speakers, connect the HDMI from the TV to the hub and light it up. The setup of the speakers seemed fairly easy. The on-screen menus walk through the calibration process which is pretty fast and simple. Those two mics on each of the other three speakers picks up the sound as it come from the one speaker at a time. So it's quite cool and easier than trying to use your phone or a mic on a cord that you lose after the initial setup. Then you can move the sound forward or back depending on where you sit and elevate or lower the sound stage as well. Once you have that dialed in, they hit you with a little 3D sound and I have to say, it's a pretty cool starting point. My pup was looking around many times at what all these foreign noises were, so it was making me smile and my dog confused. There's a good deal of additional settings that you should check out, including the ability to prioritize the signal strength versus the sound quality and the ability to choose between music and standard and cinema modes on the simple IR remote. So you should tinker around with that and find out what works best for you. But how does it sound? I mean, that's the big question. So I'm gonna hit the highs and then the lows before comparing it. And the biggest upside to the system is definitely the sound quality. And that's a big one. I was quite happy with just the four speakers when I had them on stands. I watched Free Guy with Dolby Atmos and then The Nightmare Before Christmas with the traditional 5.1 and both were amazing. I will admit, without the sub I knew that it would be a bit lacking, but it's still quite enjoyable for those who are not big into bass. I mean, I don't know who those people are, but they're probably out there. Hearing a real distinct separation of background characters and explosions was something that you don't really get with most soundbar systems in this price range. But yeah, the real treat was when I added the SA SW5 subwoofer. It really is a must have with this system. 
The living room we have is absolutely massive. Something like 15 feet to the TV by 40 feet wide by like 25 foot vaulted ceilings. And the SASW5 handles it with ease. This is the first sub from a TV manufacturer that I actually love. It has a great combination of punch and depth to the base. And yes, a dedicated system with the 15 inch sub may outperform it, but congrats to Sony for leaning in here and offering a high end sub. I may need to get some sort of mat for the sub because when I had the system going, the downward firing action makes it jump around my hardwood floor. But again, that's at really high levels and hopefully I can just get some friction on there to keep it still. I'm not sure why they went with a cloth covering. I really don't like that. I prefer something cheap that won't collect dust, but most of us really don't worry about how the sub looks as long as it's pounding. And with the sub engaged, I went right into music. The high res audio sounds amazing, if you can get it working. I was hoping I could just use the hub and that it would have the brains to stream, but for messing around with it, you need to download the Music Center app on your phone and then stream or connect music from Spotify or Amazon. I had a bit of an issue trying to get music to play. I tried getting Alexa to play on the Sony A9 is what I called it, but it wasn't really working. Then I switched to Spotify and eventually got it to play, but it's not my preferred music app. So I'll keep working on it and maybe it, just my tech skills are declining with age, but it does have some good options and you can pretty much cast whatever's on your phone to the system. And the sound quality is superb for music at any level. The lower volume, you can hear everything you'd expect and it's very even. And if you need to rock the house like I do, you'll be very happy. My wife wasn't thrilled, but it was a great listening experience when I was installing these speakers on the wall. I know I'll get asked about gaming, so let me just tell you that the system had no problem at all passing 4K at 120 through the HDMI from my X-Series X and PS5, and I was able to go directly to the TV and then e-arc the sound back to the TV as well. My son and I played Halo, Miles Morales, Dirt 5, and it really feels like you're in the game. Random explosions and crashes from behind you, side to side motion and noises really make it fun. I can confidently say that I'm impressed with the sound quality for all content. One major advantage that only some will get to experience is the connectivity with the Sony TVs. So I have the A90J OLED and because the HT A9 menu and remote are pretty basic and bland, it's really nice to have the ability to control everything on screen from the pop-up menu with the Sony A90J remote. On screen, there's like 10 new settings available. Most importantly, you can adjust the sub and the surround levels as well as enhancements like hearing the dialogue better and the immersive AE. You can't do everything with the Sony TV remote, and I did have to return to the eARC port to mess with the soundstage and to recalibrate, but it's absolutely a benefit to have a Sony TV to use with this system. And to that point, the other major feature is the ability to use the Sony TV as a center channel. So this is as high as it gets. I have a bit of mixed feelings on this, but let me go over the high side and we'll go downhill a bit. So I have the Sony OLED, the A90J, and using this as a center works really well. But when the speakers were on the stand, I felt like the Phantom Center without the TV sounded a bit better. And this was because the TV seemed to suppress some of the main center audio like voices and noises that you'd expect to hear from the middle just a bit. It was just not as loud as the rest of the system. And when I disengaged the TV as a center, the Phantom Center seemed a bit louder. But then I mounted the speakers and that phantom center was now too high and I was unable to direct that noise from those two speakers back to my seating area like I could when they were lower and turned in a bit. At that point, I engaged the center from the OLED TV and it sounded much better. So I think separating the front speakers and then recalibrating the system gave me the ability to hear the TV speaker as a center better. So it depends on the position of the speakers and the TV with the OLEDs from Sony. And I might try to get wall mounts to turn those speakers in, but I'm pretty happy with the OLED as a center. But if you have a Sony LED like the X95J or X90J, I'm gonna tell you now, don't even try to use those as centers. Their sound quality is not even close to the level coming from the OLEDs, and I already know that the Phantom Center is the only option for those TV owners, like it would be for those who have another TV brand. You just can't use any TV speakers with this system. They either won't match, or it's not even an option without the 3.5 millimeter connection. And the Sony OLED TVs have extremely good audio quality for a TV. While the Sony LED TVs are not recommended as a center, they do have the interactive menu, so that's a big plus for navigation and ease of use with this system. The downside to using the Sony TV as a center is the 3.5 millimeter cord you have to connect. I had assumed that Sony would just have some sort of Wi-Fi or WISA or some sort of internal hardware to engage the TV, but really it's just a 3.5 millimeter analog cord that goes 
back a second time to the TV with that S center connection. So I can deal with it. I don't hear any audio delays. The system seems to work well with it, but I would just imagine that a digital connection may sound better and it'd be less clutter. But what do I know? I'm not a Sony engineer and even they didn't have an answer for why Sony chose a 3.5 millimeter connection. But they did give me some insight onto the Wi-Fi system as a whole. I had some cutouts and I've seen some people talk about this in reviews on Best Buy and Sony.com that are a bit harsh to be honest. So the system turns on and scans for conflicts before creating its own radio network. And it seems to be effective for reducing interference. And the Sony engineers tell me that it's not easy to transmit this much information to the speakers, which I believe. But if you have other Wi-Fi devices near the speakers or even have the hub in a cabinet, or like I was trying to do, put it behind the OLED TV, expect some disconnects. I was having that when I walked by the surround speakers when the hub was hidden, and also when I had the Sono speakers sitting right next to the Sony speakers. So it's good to know that you shouldn't have that issue if you have the hub out and the speakers are in a relatively open area. Again, my speakers are pretty far apart and both work well and sound great when the hub is out in the open. So overall, I'm like nine out of 10 happy, but I did have some questions as to how good the system is. I mean, it's a new house and maybe it's not as good as I think. Is it better than the Sonos Arc? Because I remembered that system to sound pretty good in my old place, but it was smaller. So I might as well just get it out and set it up too. The Sonos Arc system that I have to compare is less expensive at $1850 for the Arc, the two surrounds, and the sub. The Sony system is $2500 all in, and again, I, I can't even make this comparison without the Sony sub. Andrew Robinson has a great HTA9 review and says that the big sub is the only option because the smaller is far less effective. And that makes sense to me. So I'll just have to compare the $2,500 Sony system to the 1850 cost of the Sonos Arc, and you can make the choice. While the Sonos Arc does seem to have a simple setup with the long bar in front, two rears and a sub all on separate Wi-Fi, which is solid, the fidelity of the Sonos Arc bar is not up to the task when comparing it to the Sony HTA9. I was literally swapping back and forth and to my surprise, the Sony system sounds much cleaner. In addition, the Sono Sub, which sounded great in my old place and can reach pretty deep in bass, was no match for the Sony SA-SW5. That really threw me for a loop. While the Sono Sub may go a bit lower and is just fine for most rooms, the Sony Sub just punched a lot harder. The rears for the Sonos Arc were the only competitive part in the system. Cranking them up to a pretty high level, I got a similar feeling of immersion that I got with the Sony HTA9, but the front sound quality was just not the same. So if I had to decide on the Sony or Sono system, it would likely come down to how large my room was, if I had other Sonos products I wanted to integrate with, and the cost. Because for anyone with a new Sony TV, especially the OLED TVs that have the great sound quality as a center, the easy choice is the Sony HDA9 and sub because of how it sounds and interacts with the TV menu. And apples to more expensive apples, the Sony HDA9 wins this quick AB comparison. So overall, I'm extremely happy with this system. I don't think it's the perfect system for everyone. And again, if we all have the time and money and ability to install speakers and hide wires, I'm sure you could make a dedicated system somewhat competitive for the money. Well, probably not because installation alone will set you back $1,000 or more. And having the ability to just put these four speakers anywhere in your room and calibrate to create this amazing sound field has to be worth something for ease of use. And the sub is a must for me. It is a tremendous addition to the HDA9 and really should be added if you can stomach the price. If the speakers are worth $1,800, then the sub is definitely worth the $700. And if you're looking for a good price or availability in these products, you should give the folks at Value Electronics a call. They were so kind to sell and ship this to me very early on, and they're just great people to work with. So call them and tell them Be The Installer sent you. So I really hope you enjoyed this video on the Sony HDA9. Let me know if you're planning on buying this system and what questions you may have. Make sure to smash the like button on your way out. Subscribe, set the notification bell to all, and just like that, you can be the installer.